Hello and welcome to Getting Started with Affinity Photo 2, a course of free tutorials, hints and tips on this excellent photo editing software. Today I am looking at resizing photos, especially useful for getting good quality large prints from small files. Here we have this pleasant coastal scene of some cottages in northeast England. If we look at basic information, we will see that the total pixel size is 1600 by 1074 and a file size of 1.72 megapixels. If we look at this in more detail, and we will do this by going to document and resize document. This shows me the properties for this image, as before the same pixel size, but we have 72 dots per inch. When Affinity Photo opens a photo, it opens it at 72 dots per inch. Nearly all photo editing software does this. It is the industry default for RGB images and is considered best for on-screen and web use. However, one problem arises if we're going to print a photo. Most photos are printed at 300 dots per inch. This is, once again, considered the industry standard for best results. If you print at less than 300 dots per inch, you will often see pixels in the finished photo. If you print it more, you will not get any benefits. Your eye cannot make out any difference. If we look at the size we can print this to, if we change from pixels, Two inches. My apologies for working in metric, in imperial units as opposed to metric, uh, but because we're using dots per inch, I don't want to be mixing up my terminology. At 72 dots per inch, we can print at 22.2 inches times 14.9 without losing losing any detail. However, if we want to print at 300 dots per inch for best quality, our best quality print will only be 5.3 inches by 3.58 inches. This is not very big, suitable for some use, for photo albums, for example, but not for a large print that is designed to go on a wall. So we want to look at being able to resize an image to make it big enough for a large print whilst retaining good quality. So we have opened the resize document box. We are going to resample this image, so we will leave this ticked. We will use resampling for either increasing the number of pixels or decreasing the number of pixels. Increasing is upsampling and is used to enlarge a print for that printing purpose to give the best quality at high sizes. Decreasing number of pixels can be used as downsampling. It would be mainly be used for saving files at a smaller, smaller size. You don't always want large files saved on your computer. So we can set this to a specific size. If we look at our resampling option, we have several options that we can work with. We will start with the simplest, which is nearest neighbor. Nearest neighbor is the simplest and fastest. It is particularly useful for hard edge images 
such as graphics, but not the best for high quality photography. If we change dots per inch to 300, you will now see under inches that we can print to 22.2 inches times 14.9 inches, which is a good size print to hang on your wall. Let's resize. It doesn't look any different on the screen, but if we look at the overall image size, it is now 29.83 megapixels. Our initial file was 1.72, so there's a considerable difference. As you can see on the zoomed in image, the pixels are large and very, very obvious. Uh, for this reason, I wouldn't recommend nearest neighbor for uh, photos, uh, but I do know that it is very good for graphics work. So as previously indicated, nearest neighbor resampling is suitable for graphics use, but not particularly suited for photos as it's still very pixelated. Let's look at the next option. Resize document. This time, we will look at bilinear. We change to inches. And resize. The image size is exactly the same. And it will remain the same with every resampling technique we use. If we go to 300 for this image, it will always be 29.83 megapixels. So this time we still have pixelation to consider, but it is definitely a big improvement on nearest neighbor sampling. Bilinear is considered particularly useful for downscaling images rather than upscaling. But as you can see, it can be used for upscaling. Let's go back on our history to where we started. Let's look again. This time we will select by cubic. Three hundred dots per inch and resize. Sample size is exactly the same. On our blown up image, we can see that by cubic resampling has given us the best results so far. We'll go back to where we started and we'll look at our final options which is Lanxos separable, Lanxos 3 non-separable. These are very similar and very similar in results. In theory non-separable will give slightly better results 
but it is a slower process. <clears throat> in practice, you almost certainly will not see any difference. For demonstration purposes, we'll use non-separable. And resize. We're still at 29.83 megapixels. This is our separable results. And this is non separable. And you can see we have now got the best results uh, so far. So, in conclusion, upsampling allows you to increase the dots per inch of an image for printing and allows you to print at a much higher scale than you would at 72 dots per inch. The important thing to realize is that you end up with a larger file, which if you're storing lots of images, may be something that you need to consider. There are different ways of resizing a document. But for most images, Lanxos is the preferred method for best quality. <clears throat> if you're doing graphics, then nearest neighbor should be your choice. So I hope this has been useful for you in your decision-making process, particularly if you do a lot of printing. This has been tutorial seven in getting started with Affinity Photo. Please subscribe to my channel and you will receive updates on new tutorials as they are uploaded. Thank you and goodbye.